post gloves here and this is the second part of the fruity love filter this is technically part two there's going to be more parts so uh, hopefully you watch the first one if you haven't watched my basic filter shapes video uh go look that up i use the eq2 to represent it you need to know that because we're going to be talking about the filter section. This is where things start getting fun. You start getting to mess with filters and seeing some real stuff. You must have a solid grasp on the routing. So again, if you didn't watch either of those two videos, those two are highly recommended in order to understand what we're going to go over right now. And I am going to break out an EQ too because this is just easier to explain with that. But you need to have some sort of a grasp, especially on near the end of that video. I talk about complex filter shapes and I give a few examples. You might also want to go check out the video on formants where I also talk about creating complex filter shapes using EQ2. They will both come in handy here when you're looking at this and you will understand some of the benefits and also some of the deficiencies that exist in this plugin. So I've, I've discovered that if I hit, if I use my keyboard as a controller, it will, it will still play. But if I use my MIDI controller, it doesn't work. So just interesting stuff, MIDI routing. So we have this thing for our filters. We're just going to be messing with bank number one. Uh, from here on out, you'll mostly be, we'll mostly be experimenting with just one bank. And then you could start combining multiple ones. Maybe down the line we'll do that. But so we have right here, we have our filters. And this, this is what filters are sound. And a filter is something that you take frequency content and you run it through a filter and it removes content. It can't put content back into your filter it can't generate content it's not a synthesizer it's a filter so it takes things away it filters things out that's why it's named that so we have all these different options and we have this little alt button we'll talk about that in a second and we're going to talk a little bit about filter uh theory about poles and orders of filters so we have uh all these different types of filters right here just like a whole ton you just click and drag to scroll through them and you have these poles, these levels of getting rid of sound, uh, levels of gain reduction. So if we were to turn on a, uh, let me go to something that doesn't have a lot of stuff. You'll notice I have my visuals up right now because it's just super helpful. So here's a parametric EQ. A parametric EQ is simply an EQ that gives you full control over all the parameters. So we could select our frequency. We can change the bandwidth, all these types of things. This should be familiar to you. And there are different pull ratings, okay? So, for example, when we take this down, this slope determines our level of reduction. You see, we've taken it down to negative 18 decibels, but it has a very slight slope. And the slope begins over here and as it turns down. And this is usually done on a per-octave basis. This is also referred to as Q. And we can change our slope. This is also uh, also enhances our changes our resonance though. But then you have these orders, steep eight. So as you can see, this is a much this is a much higher order filter. It's much steeper, so it cuts off a lot faster. So if you were to move this around, it would be a much sharper cutoff. So these things can or cannot be desirable, but they are important to understand with these. These one, two, three, these all affect the order of our filter, how steep this curve is. So sometimes if you have a low pass, if you have a filter that doesn't have a very strong, maybe it's like a gentle, what is it? Gentle uh, steep four. No, let's go to a gentle something. Gentle four. So maybe we got a gentle four with a lot with a large bandwidth. And so it's a very big gradual curve. It's not gonna, and you turn it on to be a filter, it's not gonna be super. Well, it'll be effective depending on what you want to do. But if you're looking for something that's really sharp and sudden and precise, this is not going to be the shape you want. So uh, one, most of the time when people are reaching for filters, you're going for three. But that's that's like really general filter use. A wise, an experienced producer who wants to create really subtle movements and effects uh, with this plugin will open up several banks and they will use multiple, maybe a combination of lower order filters that are much more general and higher order filters because as you get down the line you have less content to work with and so that's something you need to keep in mind when you're when you're doing your sound design is that these filter orders represent a lot so this one is i believe negative six it might be 12 yeah this one's 12 and then you have 24 and you have 36 i believe and then you have these alts these alts are not related to this alt button 
uh, unfortunately. You'll see it says alt times two. So these are alternate options, alternate uh, coding schemes for filters one and two. Different algorithms are used. And that's really substantial. Like, uh, let's play a few notes. We're going to go to a low pass. Well, we'll do a high pass. What the heck? So here's a high pass filter. And we're going to move our cutoff to be all the way up. We're going to talk about this in a sec. So here it is. And that's what that filter sounds like. This is what the other variation on it sounds like. Now you might be saying, well, why, why do we have these two different algorithms and why do they sound so different? We're going to explain that when we talk about this alt knob because uh, this is one of the deficiencies in it that a parametric EQ can do. So you might consider using this and in tandem with this if you I guess you want to be really specific and sometimes that it generally you end up opening this up after you do something like this anyways so uh, okay so let's talk about the so that's what the alternates do they provide alternate figures so an alternate from so this is then minus 36 this is an alternate version of that and this is an alternate version of that one and they're just different algorithms different coding schemes they have used and one other thing I want to point out right here you hear, you'll hear this sort of crackle. This uh, That's because we're using discrete digital steps and we're trying to what's called dynamically process. I'm not sure if that's a the totally correct term, but that's what I've been told it is, is dynamically process uh, for dynamic movement. So as we move it, there's no discrete steppage from going through all these values as a uh, digital effect. But you hear there's sort of this crackle and click. Well, if you come over to high quality envelopes, it increases your CPU, but a great deal of the crackle is removed. And it you'll notice it on some filters. It's quite substantial. And so I recommend it. This is a, I'm not sure how effective the memory processing behind this thing is, but I'm relatively sure this won't increase your stuff by too much. Depending, unless you have a whole bunch of these open, just depends on the level of your project. So, okay, so we have these different filter types, and we're gonna go ahead and talk about them. But first, we're gonna do something really simple because we're gonna talk about this Alt button up here, which is, it is related to these, but for the common user, this is just gonna be more confusing because this is something you have to just know about. You can't, it's not in the manual. You, you're just gonna have to know about this. I mean, the manual tells you what you need, like the different algorithms, but it doesn't tell you enough to, you know, do the thing. So we have our low pass filter and here's our thing going. So this is our cutoff value. So as you can see, as we turn it, it removes more frequencies. It's a low pass filter. Should be familiar from the basic filter shapes. And then we have our resonance and resonance is just a boost in wherever this cutoff is. And now if you've watched my Harmer series, or most other uh, series, if we create a resonance, so this is like a resonance peak, like wherever our cutoff is, this thing follows it around. So it's like this is down and this is like following it wherever it goes. So, but usually you can offset this. You do not have that option here. You cannot offset your resonance. So as this moves, this will move so far away from that. And Harmer, you can do this, but uh, you cannot do that here. So that is a shortcoming of this plugin. You cannot offset your resonance. You could theoretically do it by turning off the volume and removing uh, a few other parameters and using a second bank, but it's sort of it's sort of a bit of a hassle. So I don't recommend going about it like that. Just use another plugin. It'd be a little bit simpler. So we have this thing. It's called our resonance. So that's the boost and the cutoff. So if we turn up our resonance, here's our resonance off. It's essentially just a volume knob now. This volume. As we turn our resonance up. And you see it's exciting, the frequencies. You see how much brighter they are. And you can see a lot more. So this is high frequency content. So you could tell it's high frequency because there's these little curves and bends. This indicates that there's a much faster frequency going through here. And so high frequency stuff is introduced with the resonance knob. Now this is important in tandem with the uh, alt knob up here. The alt knob shifts the function of the resonance knob to be a from a boost in wherever your cutoff is to a control over the bandwidth. And now 
Now, most people know what bandwidth is. It's essentially this. So it's changing how big your band is. But you might be saying, wait a second, where's my bandwidth control? What is it's still labeled resonance and it still excites the frequency at the cutoff value. And I would say you're exactly right. The problem uh, with this is this is what the other two algorithms do. They give you different bandwidth options. That's what they do. So you do not get to pick that. It's just another mode of processing. So resonance is just essentially, so here's one pull of resonance. And if we turn alt on and we choose like alt two, it'll change our resonance like so. And then if we go to like filter two, maybe on our alt setting, it'll go to a shape like this instead. So you can, you do have a lot of options and choices and you can almost always find something you're happy with and you can control the amount of boost that is going on. So that's that. That's what the resonance does. So that's the bandwidth option. You can see it's a, a much sharper, a much sharper thing. It's something like that, much sharper. Now, if we turn it off. And another thing to note, because this controls bandwidth. And so the boost is happening, but it's also doing it a different way. Um, it's a little complicated, but I hope I gave you enough knowledge about this to know what you're touching when you touch these things and what they're doing. Because, I mean, it, it's not you're still going to touch it and just see what your sound sounds like after you've touched it. But now you have sort of a reason to touch it. You're not just touching it without any knowledge whatsoever about what that knob does. You're making intelligent decisions now as opposed to before when it was like sort of an ignorance you're seeing oh what does this do so that's what these are these buttons as you can see they're quite important and uh, alt is a little complicated but it's not it's pretty simple once you understand it uh, there's just not a lot of information about what this does you have to know a bit about uh, dsp to sort of infer what it does so let's go ahead and move down our filter types let's talk about these different filter types okay so We've got this, this is a state variable filter. What the heck does that mean? Well, this is essentially, you've got three filters and they can move in tandem. Now you can right click and you can automate each of these like individually. So it's sort of like having a low shelf, a band pass and a high shelf all available to you at the same time. So we're gonna turn our filters on because we wanna hear dramatic effects. We're not interested in the subtle stuff right now. So. Well, I'm going to leave it on three and I'm going to leave the resonance on just normal resonance and we're going to mess with this. And so what essentially is happening is we have a filter that looks like this. A high shelf. Whoops, not a high shelf. I want a high pass. So we have a filter like this moving around. If you're familiar with crossovers, this should be a very uh, similar concept. Uh, you should be very comfortable with this sort of a concept. So we have that high pass and then we have a band pass, something in the middle. This is a very large band pass and these two filters overlap. So they, they together, they form the entire spectrum. And then at the top, there is a Now this isn't the best visual because it will remove content, but there is a low pass at the top. And let me just to say that and there's one of these and together they overlap and they form your entire range this is how like big speaker systems work so that they can send power to individual speakers so that's what this state variable is is you have this is control over the low the low band what's going on down here the mid band and the high band so what will happen if we move them down we're going to turn the resonance down because i don't want any boosting cutoff and we're going to leave our cutoff at full uh and we'll talk about cutoff right after this so here's our sound <laughs> I'm going to remove the low band. As you can see, there's a huge hole right there. Now we're going to move, remove the band, the mid band. As you can see there's a, a hole in the mid band. You also notice that my voice, just a quick mixing tip, uh, my voice pops through a lot easier on the low band. And you might be wondering, well, geez, it sounds like your voice, most of the stuff is up here. Well, yeah, but the fundamental is what gives your voice the principal quality that it has. And it's modulation. And I believe it's below 
oh man, I can't remember what it is. 80 hertz. It might, it might be. It's really, it's surprisingly low how the average person's voice is. So just so you know, when you're working on stuff, that's like a thing. And then we have our high band. You can see, you can see it turn brighter and darker. Okay, so now we can manipulate these three bands. So we could like take the low up and then maybe bring the highs down because we don't want it that bright. And that's that's basically what these do. And so you can move these and we're gonna talk about the ability to self-modulate, meaning they will move on their own according to instructions that you give them when we talk about these things down here. Then we have our envelope. This is another thing that we're gonna talk about later. Uh, it has to do with the parameters down here, but this is the amount of control your envelope has. So you'll see right now it's only at 50%. So that means that if we draw an envelope that goes from like all the way down, it's only going to be affecting 50% of the sound. And this could be important if you're moving things on to other filters because of the routing deal. But you may want it at 100% because that seems more intuitive to me that it would just affect your entire signal. So... This is the master control. So, and the thing is, this applies to every envelope in this, in uh, order number one in, I'm just gonna call them orders. In order number one, we have eight of these. So you could turn off all the envelopes slowly. This creates, if, if you're following what I'm saying, if you've produced with a lot of automation, uh, this can be really powerful. You could turn your filters off and completely turn it into another sound seamlessly just by automating this one knob. So that is a very powerful tool you have at your disposal. Our next knob is the cutoff value. So the cutoff value, you should be familiar with this with, uh, with the other videos I asked you to go watch. If we play it. Now, all my filters are up all the way. It's not the best example of this variable state, but this is a knob common to all things. So let's go over here to the low pass. Not the best example, but as you can see, it selects. So right now, this is the low pass, so it's removing frequencies as we go down. That's the cutoff value, wherever this happens. The steepness of this curve is the order, as we talked about. And so we're moving this around. So that's that. I wonder if you... No, you can't. I, you can't automate these. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our, our variable state filter. If you drag all the way down, it's the, it's the last one in that regard. And then you have this resonance, uh, which we already talked about. So you should be relatively familiar. So you can manipulate these things to get the sound that you want. And we're going to talk about the ability to modulate them and do all sorts of even crazier stuff later. So if we click and drag up, our next one is a low pass. I shouldn't have to explain low pass. It's got to cut off a resonance. So you should be utterly familiar with this. Like that was covered in basics. A high pass, same deal in the other direction. So that's a thing. We have our low pass. So that's another thing. Oh, this is a low pass too. Okay. So this is another, it's just a different, it's a different way of combining a low pass. Maybe it's got like a shape like that. And this shape moves back and forth. They're just, it's different ways of cutting off. So it's not just a smooth slope like the orders. This is a, a special slope that's got a, a, what's called a gradient in it. And so I think it's got like, I'm not totally familiar with gradients. I've only recently learned about gradients. But uh, yeah, it has to do with the way a line graphs. So it's important when you get into trig functions and stuff in circles and calculus. So that's our low pass too. It's just a different filter shape in a nutshell. We have a band pass, which you should also be familiar with. It's one of these guys. It goes across like that. And we can, there's width and things like that. That's also controlled by these settings. So these may become, and especially the alternate, may become much more significant with the band pass filter. So this, the cutoff controls where this is moving. It's essentially, a, it's a frequency selector. It's your middle frequency is what this is. So as you can see, the resonance affects the width of our band big time. If we turn on alt, it officially is our Q control. So that's an interesting note. So I guess in a way you do control the Q. It's just... I don't know. It's just not that intuitive. I, I would much prefer to not have a weird button that can, that alternates my resonance. I'd rather have a bandpass that I can add resonance to, like this. 
that would be cool. But uh, they didn't do that. So let's go over here. This is band stop. This is the exact opposite. It creates a hole. So we go over here, band stop. There's a hole now. And then the cue is how big this hole is, essentially. And let's turn this off. All so you see the resonance controls how big the hole is. And if you put these holes in strategic places, you can create a talkie type filter thing. And if we turn on high quality, it'll... It should be worth noting that I believe all FL plugins do this. Uh, when you render out your song, you could have it running at a lower setting while you're producing. And when you render out your song, it will immediately render out at the higher setting. So that's a really useful feature. That's band stop. We have a high pass, which uh, high pass two is the same thing as a low pass, just a different curve at top. And then we have the all pass filter. So the all pass filter, the way it works is, it's different than a band stop. It doesn't just create a hole. Like I can't demonstrate it with an EQ. So what happens is you have sound coming in and it'll take part of your spectrum. So let's say from like 10K to, I don't know, like seven, and it will phase invert it and send it back into your signal. And as a result, it will cancel out because this is a basic DSP thing. Go watch the DSP series if you don't know what I'm talking about. But it'll create phase cancellations that will shift up through your sound. Or not, well, sort of, okay. That's a phaser will shift it. This is, a, this is just an all-pass filter, so it'll just stay put. So that weird noise that's going on, that's what's happening. It's just all passing your signal. And you can actually see the movement down at the bottom. So it's interesting. It doesn't... Maybe if we turn this... So you can see the little line right there. So it's interesting when you add resonance to this because I'm not sure how it, how you add resonance to a all pass because wouldn't there be a hole where it's sending it so it would be on the sides I don't know all passes if I don't know all passes are weird it's a lot more intuitive on a phaser which is why I think they generally appear there all pass is kind of a a rare thing to have in a module so it is valuable uh, okay so we have a uh, our low shelf it's essentially, you see this, how it shelves out and it reduces everything beyond the shelving point. So you select your frequency and it reduces it. This is a high shelf, so you could boost it or cut it. The low shelf is the same way, only the other direction. You should be familiar with this. Uh, and then you can adjust the gain, as you just saw. This is one that kind of makes sense to have a gain control. So you have a gain control. And you have your cutoff and resonance, all that jazz. You have a uh, peaking filter. So they look like this. And then you control the Q and you can move that around with the cutoff and you can have a gain. And you notice that our gain uh, only goes up. It does not go down. So uh, interesting. That's a peaky filter. So very similar to an EQ there. Uh, high shelf which is the exact opposite of the low shelf, which is actually what I have going on right here. And then we've got a low pass. It's a little confusing because I have a whole bunch of other filter shapes moving. This is the idea. If you can move, make this shape move in a complicated manner all at the same time, that would be like a very special filter. So we've got a, a low pass three, another low pass with some interesting properties as the shape is concerned. And that is it. You also notice that we have a drive option for the low pass. What drive does is it, it's a type of distortion. It shifts the values. So you see right now they're sort of, they're very small. This will push the values to their maximum and minimum. And it may do it with curves and different zero crossing algorithms and well, zero crossing distortion, all these different things. And the drive will provide you with that option. You notice it happens at the low end. So I, I think it's happening where the cutoff is. Well, uh, I have a video on the wave shaper. Go check that video out. It explains a lot of this stuff. So 
that's that. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. As you can see, now that you know routing and this, these two things alone, you could create some really complicated jazz as you go through here. Uh, so yeah, it's the same through all the way. You'll notice that filter rate, I didn't say this last time, but filter rate has no next knob because there's nothing after filter rate, so you can't. It'd also be kind of cool to be able to introduce feedback loops and go back into an old filter setup, like go from eight to two. But uh, this is a pretty old plugin, so I, I don't know if they'll ever do that. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I know this is kind of a lengthy video, but I just wanted to be really thorough and so that you ha can have as few questions as possible at the end. If you do have a question, again, drop that in the comments. Subscribe and have a blessed day.